AT&T's acquisition of CNN's former parent company, Time Warner, is now complete after a federal judge approved the mega merger. The new name for the media company that owns CNN is Warner Media. And joining us now is John Stanky. He's the new CEO of Warner Media. He's our new boss. And this is his first television interview since the merger. Also joining us is Brian Stelter, CNN's senior media correspondent. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Do, can we get you any coffee? Your dry yes, cleaning, anything perhaps? We can do is there, and John let's, and I are here to let's serve. Let's not push it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what a long, strange trip it has been for you to be sitting here today. Did it get? Was it much more complicated than you ever thought when this was first proposed? That may be an understatement. <laughs> I think it was a trip like no other, and I'm really glad it's behind us and uh, we've closed it out. And it's time to move forward, and really anxious to do that now. So why was it worth it? You know, given how hard it was, what is it about us writ large that was so attractive to AT&T? Well, first of all, it's an incredibly talented company across a lot of different media domains. And we felt it was really important that we have scale and capability to work on content from a variety of different segments. And so just like sitting here, news is very unique from what you might get in scripted long form, but both are very important terms of how individuals want to consume content. For us over time, the days of being able to get people just to buy connectivity from you are coming to a close because connectivity is becoming very ubiquitous and very similar and you're going to have to find ways to differentiate your business over time. And there's no better way to do it than with emotional content that customers attach to. What are you focused on, Brian? Well, you said to me the other day, CNN has a, a special social responsibility compared to, you know, TNT or TBS or the Cartoon Network. And I think what I hear from staffers here, they wonder, well, what happens when uh, CNN's Jim Acosta the other day is told by the campaign manager of the Trump campaign, you should have your credentials revoked? What happens in that environment when, when it's not Time Warner, it's Warner Media? Uh, first of all, Jeff's got the continue to do what he does, which is run this organization. Jeff Zucker, the CNN president. Incredibly well, and that first and foremost will continue. And as you know, he's here with us for the ride going forward, and I'm really pleased and excited about that. He's a very talented individual, and that will obviously be our first driver. But you know, secondly, we, as I said to you last week, we clearly understand that there's a different obligation or responsibility in running a news organization like this, and we understand that it's a two-way street, that individuals like yourself work very hard to ensure that you're picking up factual and accurate information. And our job as owning this asset and managing it with you is to make sure we back you up in that regard when you're doing your jobs well. And we're committed to doing that. You know it's a heck of a time to be jumping into the news business right now. It's, a, no, it's no different than the fact that this was a unique approval process, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're, well, are they disconnected? I have to say. I mean, were, are, are they disconnected given the history here of what the president has said about the merger and about CNN in the past going forward? You know, obviously, we cover the Trump administration very closely, and it creates a lot of complications. Look, I, I think everything in industry right now is probably more complex and more difficult than it's ever been. And I, I think if you were sitting over at Facebook today and asking about what it's like to run their business, mm. the transparency dynamic that any company has to run under, and the volatility that it brings into decision making, that's just part of industry today. And I don't think it's unique to our circumstances. I think it's just broad scale across the ec economy right now. So for all of our viewers who are watching, they want to know what this means for them. Mm -hmm. Are their costs going up? What else? How, how will this affect them? Yeah, contrary to what the government alleged, no. Um, our goal here is actually to innovate on product. And, uh, you know, for me personally, why I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've always been happiest in my career when I get to build things and do unique things and do things that are different. And our goal here is to invest in this business. And our goal is to do it in a way that provides for platforms and capabilities that are consistent with where technology is taking things. And you know, a classic example might be here at CNN. How can we broaden the distribution of the great content you guys build every day? How can we make it more readily available in the, the pushed lifestyle that everybody leads? Uh, and I think there's a, some very exciting things to do in that regard. So it's about innovating. It's about building new product. It's about investing heavier in content. Uh, it's certainly not about going out and just trying to think about we want to raise prices on content for what other people buy. I, I think that's interesting because there's been some concern in the cable industry that we're in a period of, of decline or shrinkage as opposed to growth and investment. 
And you're saying at places like HBO, there's more money that should be spent. Well, look, I think that the model as we know it today, you know, standard linear television is a very mature model. Um, and standard linear television in the form of uh, how ads are supported in it. But there's an opportunity to innovate in that regard, not only with how the content's configured, but to think about how advertising supports that content. Mm. And that's why we established the advertising entity with an AT&T that's being led by Brian Lesser. The purpose of that is to start building the new ad mm. formats and the more targeted advertising that can lower ad loads and still monetize content in a way where it remains affordable for the customer. So that's the kind of innovation we're going to be working on. So, so fewer ads, but more valuable ads. But, but when I hear you say that, I think, wait, what about Samantha B? Right, a few weeks ago, advertisers start calling up because she offended a lot of people with her comments about Ivanka Trump. What do you do when that happens? Well, look, those moments are going to come up, and I wasn't here at the making at that point in time when that one occurred. I've had conversations with folks, and I have at least a high-level view of what took place. And... Uh, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that every time something like that was coming up, there wasn't a conversation inside of AT&T, you know, what would you do? Yeah, what would days? you do? Yeah. Uh, I would yeah. tell you that based on my understanding, again, I wasn't there with every detail of it, but process that I think uh, was executed in that regard and the outcome from it tracked very similar with my point of view and probably what I personally would have done. Um, you know, at the end of the day, our job is to kind of make reasonable judgments, work through these things. Uh, get the facts. Um, I think what's what is true is we're in a very transparent time. The speed at which you need to do that is changing pretty dramatically. It's going to have to be much faster than it has historically been, and that's going to be one yeah, of the look challenges. Look at Roseanne the other week. Yeah, yeah. A good example, right? So, so HBO, obviously, as much as we like to think it's all about us, I mean HBO. <laughs> HBO is a giant part of this, and what you want to do with HBO is, I think, something that a lot of consumers, a lot of viewers, would like to know. Brian mentioned maybe more of an investment there in content, is the idea to make HBO more Netflixy, for lack of a better word? So HBO is a fabulous brand, and they've carved out a great position in the marketplace. And we candidly believe, as we started this process, that, it, that with the right kind of investment, the right kind of technology platforms, that it can do more. It can garner more engagement from a customer. They do a great job with what they have today. And I think if you went and spoke with most of the folks at HBO, if, they had an opportunity to invest in more content. They believe they can get more hours of the week of customer engagement. And that's really the battle we're all fighting is how many hours a week are we getting engagement from customers? And we do believe that positioning the asset in a different fashion, that we can start to drive that engagement up. And it's going to be a combination of product and content that enables that to happen. And that's clearly a place we're going to be spending some time. I think you should bring back The Sopranos and Sex in the City. Have you considered that? Um, that's there's uh, my job is to stay out of the content <laughs> decisions and oh. and facilitate capital allocation. All but right, I'll pass I'll it on. You don't want to be hours. hanging out in the writers' room. You don't want to be pitching your own shows. Well, I'm, I'm going to watch, but I'm certainly not going to get involved in the decision. Never take the wire. <laughs> you like that? The wire. All right, I'll talk to Richard Pleffler about all of that. Brian, what do you have? What are you keeping your eye on? How will well, we've talked about HBO of... and, and Turner, you know, CNN. What about Warner Brothers? You know, you're also buying a huge movie studio. All of these television shows. Uh, what is the future of a, a big studio like Warner Brothers? So I think as things evolve over the next five years, um, one of the things that many companies are going to want to do is be able to more directly control their intellectual property. And if you can control your intellectual property, then you have the flexibility as to how you move it around your technology platforms. Um, and this becomes even more important if you start thinking about the global dynamics of this industry and how it's going to evolve over time. Mm. So we're, we're picking up an incredibly talented group of individuals that know how to make content, know how to make content both in a variety of long form cinematic and scripted short form. And that becomes an engine and it becomes an engine to have more intellectual property that allows you to drive people into your technology platforms and get that engagement I talked about earlier. So continuing to use that skill set, continuing to manufacture intellectual property that you can own, control and library over time. I think that's the flexibility of kind of what's driving the vertical integration in this industry. And it's interesting to hear, bottom line is the goal is more hours per week, right? right? All these big media companies, they want more time with more consumers. If you think about the battle we're in right now, um, it's a battle for customer engagement. There's Physics isn't going to change the number of hours in the day, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, technology will enable some instances where people maybe can spend more time consuming as we see people spending less time behind a wheel, maybe in autonomous vehicles, more time in the backseat of a car. 
5G networks that enable ubiquitous distribution of video no matter where you are. I think there's going to be an opportunity for more consumption of content within the context of that 24-hour day. Our job is to figure out how to get our fair share of it. Is Allison safe? At Allison's safe. You're all safe. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you, I was just, I was, thank thank you, so you very much, much for that. John, uh, great you. to have you here, it's and it's an exciting here. time. I'm very excited to be with all of you.